Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. WHO approves Pfizer-BioNTech for Caribbean region. This study takes the lead in our 1024th edition of Caribbean Perspective for Friday 8th January 2021. Details when we return. Welcome back. The Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine for COVID-19 is now in the COVAX facility and has been approved for emergency use by the World Health Organization. What this means is it's also approved for the use of Trinidad and Tobago. The Ministry of Health can't say definitely at this time whether Trinidad and Tobago would be receiving that particular vaccine, but the healthcare system is equipped to store the initial amount of 50,000 doses in the first instance. TV6's Alicia Boucher has more in this report. For this region? Pfizer. Pfizer. So Pfizer has been approved. That approval was granted by the WHO on the first day of 2021, making the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine available for emergency use listing through the COVAX facility. PAHO WHO representative Dr. Erica Wheeler says that type of approval varies from the traditional way of approving vaccines. When WHO speaks about an emergency use listing, it means that a risk-benefit assessment has been made of um, things like the quality, the safety, and the efficacy data for the use of these vaccines. And something called a rolling review of the data provided by the manufacturers is used. And why we call it a rolling review? Because traditionally, we would wait until all of the possible information is available and gather it at one time and review it. But instead, as soon as new information becomes available, Dr. Wheeler says reviews are done and assessments are made by independent scientific experts. She adds that this method is being used because of the seriousness of the pandemic. The vaccine would remain under the emergency use listing for a specified period to allow for further monitoring. But it's looking at what happens following the deployment of the vaccines in terms of any reactions. And emergency use listing is usually for a year because the vaccines are new and they're being studied during that period. Minister of Health Terence Dielsing says countries in the Latin American and Caribbean region, including TNT, have experience in rolling out massive vaccination campaigns, and he's confident that there would be success in relation to vaccination for COVID-19. Stemming from a meeting on Tuesday between the COVAX facility and the chief medical officer, Dielsing says there was a bid to acquire more information. What, did, what we did eventually was requested some packages of information that they um, have promised to send about the candidate vaccines that they are looking at for this region. They are Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca and the Sanofi vaccine, which is still in the phase of having clinical trials completed. Dial Singh says no decision has been taken on which vaccine TNT would receive, and that's what the ministry has to wait on for completion of the PAHO WHO list of requirements to allow for vaccine acquisition. In presenting a spreadsheet, the minister states the country is in a good place. We have three red areas, which means they are areas of concern out of a total of over 100. The remaining reds have mainly to do with the logistics of which vaccine we are to receive. Minister Dial Singh says the three sub-zero freezers TNT currently has have the ability to store 50,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine, which can vaccinate 25,000 people. He adds that the purchase orders for more freezers would be sent out in the coming week based on the request for proposals that were put forward in December. Alicia Boucher. TV6 News. Meanwhile, Chief Medical Officer at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Roshan Parashram, says the Ministry of Health in Trinidad is exploring electronic bracelets for people in quarantine as a number of them have breached the quarantine order and are awaiting prosecution by the police. 
He was speaking at a joint select committee meeting on Wednesday. Electronic monitoring will be implemented soon for COVID-19 patients who have been ordered to quarantine at home. This was revealed by Chief Medical Officer Dr. Roshan Parasram, who says that there are persons who have failed to obey the quarantine order. The technology we are exploring with regards to the bracelet, if you do cut the bracelet, um, a message will be sent to the police force and they will be, again, in breach of the quarantine. If, so, so even if you cut it or remove it in any form or fashion, an alert will go to the police force and as well as health. So we will know that that has been done. He warned that persons not abiding by the protocols are putting the safety of the country at risk. So that's the technology we want to use in, in, in terms of quarantine. What we are using currently for contact tracing is telemedicine. We have brought on stream a number of um, physicians and nurses, and they have been placed at every county medical officer of health in Trinidad to increase the number of staff that we have to actually physically call persons. They've been given telephones as well. So we will get a full list of any positives or suspected cases, primary contacts, secondary contacts, whether it be from the airport or outside, and they will be um, assigned to actually individuals and they will call them twice a day to ensure that they do um, checks on them, see where their location is at. In addressing the breaches of COVID-19 protocols over the past couple of months, Dr. Parasram indicated that reckless behaviour by offenders will not be tolerated. We have referred a number of those cases to the police for breach of quarantine, and those persons have been brought into the step down and they are in the process of being prosecuted under the Quarantine Act. Um, so the process we're using now is more telemedicine-based, we're looking at the app for the, the app as well to replace some of the telemedicine work where people will be able to actively send data on their well-being back to the ministry, as well as, of course, the, tele, the, the bracelets, which will be more for security purposes. So once we have that in place, we can have be a, a little more comfortable that those who are in quarantine stay in quarantine and can be monitored all, all through the day and night. He again appealed to members of the public to adhere to the COVID-19 rules and regulations. Nisha John Mohammed, TV6 News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Towering stalwart in the trade union movement in Antigua and Barbuda has died. The former General Secretary of the Antigua Trades and Labor Union, Robin Bascas, died on Tuesday night. President of the ATNLU, Wigley George, was given the opportunity to reflect on his contribution earlier on Wednesday. Earlier on Wednesday. Here is more in this ABS News item. Robin Bascas was a towering figure in the Antigua Trades and Labor Union. He was an unmistakable presence at the side of former President Sophia Cornwall Bird during the tough times of the struggle. Bascos remained loyal to Sophia and the labor movement to the end. President of the Union, Wigley George, ranked the benefits that statutory corporations enjoy today as among his most outstanding contributions. Most of the contracts are fashioned alike, and because of his intervention at that time, the workers there are benefiting tremendously, um, enjoying pensions and advanced vacation. Uh, they are also getting... Uh, marital gratuity, death gratuity, you name it. The former General Secretary served in the country's upper house as a senator and used his voice to speak up in Parliament on issues related to the rights and privileges of the worker. According to George, he was principled and fearless. George credits him for approaching rival organization the Antiguan Barbuda Workers Union to initiate the Trade Union Congress, TUC. When I, when I got back to the Trade Union and got involved, it was known to me that, hey, perhaps you guys would be foolhardy to go over there and do this. But it was brought to my attention through Maurice Christian that, hey, Comrade Bascos was the person who actually came and proffered that to the trade unions. Let us come together as one body. And so he, too, will be remembered for having initiated that, that, that particular process. Besides the union, Bascos was an avid sports fan and a highly skilled football player. Andy Lybird. Reporting for ABS News. Over in Guyana, even as a local laboratory on Tuesday confirmed suspected cases of the new strain of COVID-19, the Shadow Minister of Health is calling for the immediate closure of both international airports. 
Here is more from HGP's Tamika Rodney. Dr. Karen Cummins, Shadow Public Health Minister during a telephone interview with this newscast on Tuesday, is urging health authorities to refrain from taking a laid-back approach to protecting Guyanese against the new variant of COVID-19, which has emerged in other sections of the world. What we intend to do is to be reactive rather than proactive. You know, of course, we have known that globalization, international travel, there's an increase in that. But these same countries... UK, France, Germany, um, Northern Ireland, and Australia, Netherlands, and those countries, they have um, closed their borders, you know, going to this new strain, this virus. And so we have to follow suit. In fact, right now, we can't even test the strain. So we don't even know who's co- who coming and who's going. On Tuesday, in an exclusive interview with this newscast, Eureka Medical Laboratory indicated that several suspected cases of the new strain of the virus have been detected through testing at its laboratory. Dr. Cummins is adamant that, at the very least, the existing quarantine protocols for passengers entering Guyana from the United Kingdom and other countries where the new variant has been detected should be upgraded. When I was there in, in um, foreign affairs, we had a, you know, we had a form, you have to be filled, you know, your place of travel. And so I'm not sure what sort of information has been gathered prior to, to passengers coming to Guyana. You know, so they need to have some kind of information, you know, prior to the person's arrival. And, and then when you come, you certainly want to run tests on quarantine and, and, and to dig deep. And to, to monitor those cases that those persons who have come from those um, high risk areas. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony on December 22 announced that Guyana is awaiting guidance from the Caribbean Public Health Agency in relation to imposing a ban on travel from the United Kingdom. Our advice from CARFA is that we should wait a little bit to see what is happening and to get more scientific information before we make a decision. Earlier this week, health officials in Jamaica reported four cases of the new strain of COVID-19. According to the World Health Organization, on December 14th, authorities of the United Kingdom reported that a new SARS-CoV-2 variant was identified through viral genomic sequencing. From October 5 to December 13, over 50% of isolates were identified as the variant strain in southeast England. This variant of COVID-19 is way more contagious than the previous strains. Tamika Rodner reporting for the HGP Nightly News. I am Eddie Frederick, wishing you a restful weekend. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.